let us understand the term linear relationships. Linear programming deals with problems in which the objective function and the constraints can be expressed as a linear mathematical function or in other terms they can be expressed as a straight line. Now a general linear equation can be expressed as a1x plus a2y plus a3z or z plus and so on equals to b. Now here x, y and z would be the decision variables. and a1, a2 and a3 these are the coefficients and b is a constant so what this means is that for linear programming basically the constraints and the objective function should be in such a format so that if you have say two variables say x and y then you will have a straight line if you have say three dimensional three variables this is x y and this is z then also you will have a straight line this can represent your constraints or objective function so what this also means is that these constraints or the objective function should not have any products like 10 multiplied by x multiplied by y or any powers for example x to the power of 3 or x to the power of 4 so this should not happen this should simply be expressible as a1x plus a2y plus a3z is equal to b now these linear relationships have some properties like proportionality divisibility and additivity so let us understand these three terms so let us first understand the term proportionality let's consider this simple example to easily understand this term a gardener has dollar nine to spend on two types of fertilizers a and b the price of a is dollar one and that of b is dollar 1.5 per bag now it is known that for three bags of a four bags of b are needed to offset the detrimental effects of the former fertilizer so if we just consider this simple example and try to express the example in terms of a linear programming model let's consider x as the quantity of a and y as the quantity of b so our first constraint in terms of price is that 1 times x is dollar 1 and the quantity of a is x plus 1.5 times y is equal to 9 so this is 9 is the total 
amount that has to be spent on the fertilizer. So X is the quantity of fertilizer A, Y is the quantity of fertilizer B and per unit or per bag costs dollar one for A. So X bags will cost one times X. Similarly, one bag of fertilizer B costs $1.5. So Y bags will cost 1.5 multiplied by Y and the total is nine. Now the next constraint given to us is that it is known that for three bags of A, four bags of B are required. That means four times X is equal to three times Y. Let us understand this equation, how this has been made. So let's say here I have the quantity of A and here this is quantity of B. So if I have three bags of A, I will need to have four bags of B. Now if I add three more bags here, I have to add four more bags here. So this can keep on increasing. Let's say the quantity of bags for A is X and bags for B is Y. Now if we have to make these two equal, then let's say what will it take to have one bag here and one bag here. So X is the total quantity and say in this case we'll divide it by 6 and this will be equal to y is the total quantity and this divide by 8. So what this means is 8x is equal to 6y or if you divide both these equations by 2 you will get 4x is equal to 3y. So this is what I have mentioned here as the second constraint. So this is the total amount of money being spent on the product B. And this is the total amount of money being spent on product A. So the quantity of B, that is Y, and the total amount of money spent on fertilizer B which is 1.5 multiplied by Y move up together. So if you increase Y the overall price will also increase. So for each unit increase in the products quantity which is Y the total amount of money spent on this fertilizer increases by 1.5. So let's assume that Y is 1. So then our price is 1.5. Let's increase this by one unit. So let's say the quantity is increased to 2. Then our price becomes 1.5 multiplied by 2 which is 3. Again if we increase the quantity by one more and make it 3, the price increases again by 1.5 and becomes 1.5 multiplied by 3 which is 4.5. Then next will be 6 and so on. So what this indicates is that there is a proportionality relationship between the total amount of money spent on B and the quantity of B. So this is known as proportionality in terms of linear programming. Now let's take the next term which is divisibility. What this indicates is that the variables are not restricted to integer values that is they are not restricted to 1, 2, 3 and so on. 
the decision variables are continuous and as such their fractional values are permitted in the solution so it can be 1.5 1.8 and so on the next term is additivity what this term means is that the sum of resources used by different activities must be equal to the total quantity of resources used by each activity for all the resources individually and collectively so let's take the example of the equation that we referred to earlier which is 1x plus 1.5y is equal to 9 so here in this case the equation represents the resource which is funds or money spent so what this term says is that the sum of resources used by different activities so this is the sum that is this is the total money sp spent or to be spent this must be equal to the money spent on each of the activity which is this is say the money spent on fertilizer A and this is the total money spent on fertilizer B so the sum of individual and all collectively all activities that is the sum of price of A and B will be the total amount of money spent let us understand another term which is non-negativity restrictions so what this says is that the value of decision variables must be either zero or positive because a negative value of decision variable would imply negative production so suppose x and y are the uh, number of units to be produced for say two different products and if the value comes out as negative what that would mean is that you are doing negative production or in other terms the state of dismantling or destruction and since such a state in a real life situation is non-existent the decision variables must be either positive or zero so x should be greater than or equal to zero and y should be greater than or equal to zero so this is one of those constraints which should be applicable to all the linear programming examples that you solve